guys, <clears throat> Gemma from ASD Rocks. I've been asked to do a video about, it's hard to say, but the OCD component of autism. Whether you want to call it OCD or whether you want to call it um, comfort by routine, is a point at which it becomes so uncomfortable for a child to do something out of their routine that it can be considered OCD. There are a number of things about it that I remember that I didn't really place much of a um, I didn't place enough weight behind what was happening because of course Bo was non-verbal he seemed so advanced once he started walking at 10 months you know and he was off he would climb the stairs which they learn to do when they're crawling you know um, we had baby gates and all that sort of stuff but Every time he got to the top of this, these particular stairs, there was a, a huge grate, like a, an air vent intake for the heating. So it sort of looks like, um, like those vent big, I don't know, it's gotta be like 50 small squares down by 20 across, you know? in sort of a, a white plastic that's what it all it looked like and every time he got to the top of the stairs he would stick his finger in the same hole every time and I never like you know it's so funny I just I never really I, we were we were always laughing about it <clears throat> excuse me we were always laughing about it and we were like, you know, I could never remember which hole it was, but he always knew. Another thing, looking back, that I didn't understand, we used to take, we used to take him on walks uh, regularly. God, he had so much energy. He was just such a bundle of energy. And the fact that he didn't sleep didn't help. So we would take him on walks around the block. And if we tried to turn back or go a different way, he would lose it. And again, he was so young because he was nonverbal for so long. You know, I didn't know why he was losing it, why we couldn't turn back, why we had to complete this walk around the block, you know. For me, it was a matter of getting him out and walking, not a matter of, you know, doing a routine. I just needed to, you know, I was hoping that he would get exhausted and then hopefully go to bed at a reasonable hour. <clears throat> not that he ever did. And this OCD really, you know, grew and grew to, you know, if we were driving, and again, it's crazy what these kids are taking in at such a young age, guys. Try please to think of it more like if, you're blind, your hearing is incredibly sensitive, or if you're deaf, maybe your sight or touch, whatever it is, there is something in all these kids that is hyper tuned. It is amazing. It, and you know, from such a young age, he knew the direction to my mother's house. And I'm talking stupidly young, yeah? Like really such a young age and he knew and if we drove past there 
Not that I ever said that that's where we were going. But he obviously, if we started on that route to get somewhere and we had to go past there, he would lose it, lose it. We actually had to make up different, we had to make up a different route to drive so that we wouldn't go past my mother's so that he wouldn't lose it. And I'm talking again, this is under two years old. I mean, who knows the way at under two years old to, you know, I mean, I just, it's, it's somewhat unfathomable sometimes to think that that's what he knew. And to talk to him now about the things that he remembers and how far back he remembers is also just incredible. So this OCD component, you know, I've got a lot of, um, I've got a lot of messages asking about meltdowns and, and a lot of messages asking about uh, how to handle, you know, behavior and triggers and things like that. And I want you to consider that there may be in some of your cases for some you an OCD component to it that you're not understanding or you're not seeing which is fine because some of our kids are non-verbal and some of our kids are you know you don't realize you don't realize at the time and you're not I mean I'm only giving you this kind of information. It's all been and gone. We've worked it out now. You know, Bo remembers it. He will tell us, oh, yeah, I did that because this and that. You know, I've got answers which I never had before. And my hope is that, that I get to pass on those answers to you so that you can use this information to maybe tweak the way that you're approaching certain behaviours and see it as oh maybe this is what is going on so with OCD behaviors they can also be used to your advantage and that comes down to my language thing and if you haven't seen the video um, how I got Bo verbal that uh, I basically used OCD to get him verbal talking so under uh, the playlist Well, it'll definitely be in parenting autism. Um, so take a look under parenting autism and it, it says how I got bow verbal. I mean, you can't get it much more clearer than that. And I, it's, it's, a ta it's a tactic I used literally to get it chunking, to get bow verbal. And I used his own OCD against him. And in fact, once you see the OCD or once you see the, the need for repetition, the safety in, in the familiar, you can actually really work within that and expand it and use it to your advantage to help these kids get more exposure, more independent, more verbal, all those sorts of things. So I hope this really helps. Um, if you've got any questions, again, just uh, just write and ask, you know, what did you mean by this or that? You always do. So, AST rocks, guys.